Hello, today we're going to go through using a Azure mobile service with a Gadgeteer device. In the past I've been using uh, services such as uh, ThingSpeak or OpenSense you know, as somewhere to upload my data to from my Gadgeteer sensors that I've built. Uh, but you know, today we're going to do Azure. Now Azure's Azure's an amazing product. They can do a ton of things, but you know, Azure Azure is is perfect for the Internet of Things. I mean, you've got scalability and and such. It's it's a real pleasure to use. But I think one of the things that kind of gets people about Azure is they think you know, wow, it's incredibly powerful and all these cool features and stuff. It must be really hard to use, and uh, and it's not. And so we're going to go through a little demo project here showing how easy it is to uh, to get gadget here to upload data to a Windows or an Azure mobile service and and you can do this you can get an Azure account a free trial account and and use that to to do this with and so when you get your Azure account go to uh go to uh manage windowsazure.com log in and stuff and then you'll you'll get you know this screen here which is where you can manage uh, all your Azure services and stuff so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mobile service now this is really really easy to do so um, you know I'll, I'll walk you through the steps of what we're gonna do we're gonna call this uh, uh, gadget here test one um, we're gonna use a you know free new database we're going to put it in the western region. I mean, we can put it in a number of different places. I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, so West U.S. works for me, nice and close. And so, you know, it goes off, and okay, now it wants some information about our database, but, you know, we're going to tell it, hey, you know, no, we want a whole new SQL database and make this really easy. And so we're going to say, what is this? This is your... Um, give it a uh, login name so your server login name give it uh, a password something suitably complex and again you know we have our choice of where we want to have this thing located so I think we're gonna again we're gonna go for uh, West US and so we're off to the races and so we now Azure goes off and it spins up a new database for us and everything else and creates these uh, services and stuff you can see that it's working down here in the corner that it's you know the little bars are moving and then uh, once those are done there'll be some information there telling us about the status you know if it was able to create it and stuff like that and so you know like I said this uh, control panel is really kind of cool I mean I, I really do like this logging because it's very complete um, you know they're not sort of left wondering you know what happened there uh, it works out really well. Now, one of the things I should mention while it's doing this is, you know, the first time I created a mobile service, you know, it was asking me about, you know, you, you know, do you want to create a table? And I thought, oh, gee, I mean, I've got to go down to the database and create that table. But the reality is, I mean, you know, this is how Azure makes stuff simple. I'm creating a mobile service. Azure goes off and creates a database in behind that it's going to use for my mobile service. I don't care about my uh, about my database down here I mean there it is great it's there I don't need to worry about it I just need to worry about my mobile service so if we come in here this is what I mean you know everything was created nice and we can click that so now if we go to the mobile service and we we click on this you know we get this little thing here I mean we can click to get rid of this if we want but what I want to do is I want to go and look at uh, at my data but it says, hey, you know, you've got no tables. And so this is what I mean. You know, sort of the first time I did this, it's like, oh, I need to add a table. And I thought I needed to add it to the database. When no. I don't I the Azure takes care of everything that deals with that database from here on out. All I do is I stay at the mobile service level. So I'm gonna say add a table. And so this is my uh the data sensor is just some climate information from within my office, so we'll just call it office climate. Uh, we can change some permission levels here if we want. Uh, the reality is I'm going to make it so you have to have an application key to use this, and we'll give that application key to the uh, the device. I'll show you where you get that application key in a minute. So we click that, and now so Azure goes off and it builds us this table, and the table is in the database. We don't care about where or why or what. Uh, we click on this, and we can see 
well, it contains no records. You know, we can go in and look at the columns it's created. It's created some default columns for us that it uses to manage the data. But, you know, those aren't the columns I want. But, you know, the reality is if I ran my device against this now, Azure would add the columns for me, but, it, you know, make them all strings. And so I, I don't want that. So I'm going to go in here because I want to create my data as numbers. So we're going to call this... Uh, so there's a temperature that goes with the pressure module. So let's off creating that. We'll create a number one in here called pressure. And so that's our pressure. And then we'll create a guy called uh, temperature two. And again, he's a number type. Temperature two, as you can see, I've done this a couple times trying to get this video right for. <laughs> It's always fun doing YouTube videos. Uh, and we want to add one in here called number again for humidity. Add that. And then we'll add another column. Uh, again, number value for luminance. And then the last column we want to add is a number for air quality, but have an air quality sensor on this demo device as well. And so there it goes off and creates, like I said, we've got this really great logging here that tells us everything that's done. We can get rid of them all by just saying dismiss completed. And so that's it. We're done. Our mobile service is ready to roll. So if we go in here and look, and of course, there's no data. Um, and so what we need to do now though is we need to go write our application. Now as I mentioned there's a key that we need so we come in here and we click on here and we can see that you know Gadgeter test is the only one highlighted. There's this guy down here called manage keys. Now the key that we want is the application key and this is what's going to allow Gadgeteer or, or device, Gadgeteer device, to be able to use this mobile service. So we'll We'll copy this for the moment. Now, of course, I you know I'm going to regenerate this, so you know these keys you're not going to be able to use them to access my device when you're watching this video because I'll have changed them by then. But for the moment, we'll copy that, and that's it. So our mobile service, we're done with it. It's ready to roll. It's just waiting for us to start sending it data. Now, in order to use this mobile service, we're going to use a, a CodePlex library that a uh, chap in Italy wrote, uh, Paolo, and it's uCloud. And now this is uCloudy. It's, it's a project that's in progress. I mean, there's certainly some development left to be done on it and such like that. But, you know, it's an amazing piece of, you know, code. It takes all the heavy lifting out for us in terms of what we, what we have to do in order to get our Gadgeteer device to use uh, when uh, Azure uh, mobile service. So we grab this. This is free. Now, it, for the moment, it, it requires um, this up library, which again, Paolo wrote, uh, and it's, it's great. I've used this before because this is where the things speak libraries and stuff all are that I've used before, and it's great. So you grab both these guys, uh, the source code, you put them at the same sort of directory level, and then you can just go in um, and just compile this. And so it'll produce the uh, the DLL that's required for Gadgeteer to be able to talk to um, uh, the mobile service, right? And so easy peasy. So now we go into uh, into our device that we built, and it's a pretty standard little device that I've built. I've built hundreds of these things. Um, you know, we've got a an Ethernet uh, cable. I've got this wired. We could have put Wi-Fi on here, or whatever. Uh, there's a barometer module, so that's barometric pressure and temperature. There's a light sensor, that's where we're getting our luminance from. Um, temperature, humidity, so that's relative humidity and, and temperature. And then, as I said, there's this gas sense module, which I've got an air quality gas sense uh, sensor plugged into it. And it all runs on a Fez Spider. So all of this stuff comes from GHI Electronics. Now, if we go in and look at the code, how we uh, how we use this uh, uCloud is really simple. 
um, you know, we add it to the uCloud project I'm using uh, .NET Micro Framework 4.2, so I add that one to my project, that, and we're ready to roll. And then I add the reference in the uh, in the references. I add that as a project reference into there. So that application key that I copied that goes right there. So I've declared off a constant for that. There's a URL that uh, that's in Azure, how we access our Azure uh, service. So that was Gadgeteer Test 1 Azure Mobile.net. And again, I have two timers here because again, I have this, this gas sensor which requires a, a heat up a uh, element within the sensor in order to get a reading. So we go for 45 seconds. Then we turn on this uh, heater for 15 seconds and then we grab our readings and we throw them up to uh, to the mobile service. So, you know, pretty standard stuff. You know, like I said, Gadgeteer is a great way, way to build devices, easy as anything, right? But here's where we kind of, we get into, into this. So the first thing we do is we have to create this mobile service client. And this comes again out of this uCloudy. So we give it the, the URL where our, uh, to where our mobile service is, and we give it this application key, and that's all we need to do. This null is uh, in, we don't need to give it the, the master key, just the application key. And then, so we have that, and then we tell it, well, you know, hey, go get this table that I've got called Office Climate, and so there's our table. And then, so now I want to be able to insert a new row into this table. now. Here I wrote a class, and this is basically just the row structure of the table. I've, you know, my temperature, pressure, and and such, right? But the one thing that we have to do, and and you know, this will be, I'm sure this will be automatic in future versions of UCloudy or whatever. Like I said, this is a work in progress, and Paolo is always looking for feedback and stuff on these libraries so that you know he can develop them further. But so this is pretty easy. I mean, basically all we do is we just create a JSON string of our data and so the uCloudy library is looking for to JSON uh, function to get this string and so we just manually put this together now at the moment so really really simple to do so you know we create this uh, this new table row we populate it with the data that we've got and then uh, we just tell my table insert that row of data and that uploads the data up onto uh, into our mobile service. Really simple. Now when you're debugging this, what really kind of helps is it returns a string, a string result of this, you know, so if you print that result out, you'll get to see, you know, maybe, maybe you have your application key wrong or your table name wrong or whatever. And you'll get an actually really good error message back that'll help you identify what the problem is so you can fix it really quickly. And, you know, and you're off to the races. So, I'm going to start this. So as you can see, you know, Visual Studio is compiling up our application and it's going to deploy it onto our device for us and then, you know, it'll run it for us and we'll hit the breakpoints and stuff. Like I said, uh, one of the things I like the most about Gadgeteer is that the development environment is, is full powered Visual Studio uh, and that really makes it easy to uh, build uh, devices and, and get, you know, with Gadgeteer. So now we've got this, this 45 seconds where it's waiting and it's not doing anything and then it'll hit the, the second timer. It'll warm up that uh, element for 15 seconds and then we'll grab a reading. So while it's doing that, I'll just mention I'll post all the source code and everything for this project and uh, if you look down below There'll be the links for source code for the project, for the uh, uCloudy library, for the app library. Um, it'll all be there. So uh, help yourself, and, and hopefully uh, you get to enjoy playing with Gadgeteer and, and the many possibilities that you can have with it with Azure and stuff as I do, and that, that this project helps you kind of get going on using, uh, on using uh, Azure because it is a phenomenal tool and very powerful, but yet, you know, pretty easy to use too. So here we are. So we, you know, we're going to go off and grab all our, our stuff, make our connection. Uh, I'll let it run through. So it's rounding up the data and structuring it all, setting it up. 
And so if we go up here into, now I should mention, if the data s is sent okay and there's no problems or whatever, this is, so basically you get to see the data that was thrown up um, to the mobile service and so you're good to go. So we'll just clear off these breakpoints. We'll let it run and it'll start the timers again and then we'll, uh, we'll come back in here. So if we look at our mobile service, we click on our gadget here, we go look at our data. Let it go and grab that. So there's our data. And so now it'll just continue to throw up data every minute. You know, the pressure, temperature, humidity, the readings and stuff every minute. For as long as I run this device now. Um, the free accounts with, uh, with um, Azure are pretty generous in terms of your data usage and, and stuff like that. Um, just so uh, everybody's aware though that you do have a pretty powerful monitoring capabilities with with these. Uh, you know, since we're not really throwing a lot up here, we've made two calls so far. Um, you can really kind of keep an eye on, on how Gadgeteer is being used and what it's doing for you and stuff like that. So it's it's really quite a quite a remarkable piece of technology, not only in, in what it can do, but in how well you can closely you can monitor it and stuff like that. And uh, pretty cool. But anyway, so that is how you use Azure Mobile, Azure Mobile Services with Gadgeteer. And I hope that uh, that gets you rolling and I'll put up some more uh, videos as, as time comes. And again, thank you very much for watching. Bye.